The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the May 1st. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, no problem. Let those fingers do the walking. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside the Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow trading down 350 points. 23,813 is the print. S&P is off 22. She's trading down at 26, 26. NASDAQ 100 down 13 points. Russell off eight. Semis are up three. Tranny's down about a little over 1%, 110 points. Uh, you get the spot volatility index of 5%. That's only 84 cents. Gold is off 11 bucks. Silver, 24 pennies. Lights we crude back a buck 13. She's trading out at uh, 67.44. Lead the charge here to the upside. It is I know Jen. ING ends the ticker symbol, 19% to the upside. That's 27 points. You've got the well care health plans up uh, nearly 11 bucks. That's a little over 5%. IPG photonics up nearly 5% or 10 bucks. Lending tree up seven. Nutrisystems up 560. Tenant health care up five buckaroonies. To the downside, Northrop Grumman leading the charge, 18 bucks and change, nearly 6%. To the downside, Lockheed Martin off 17 bucks, nearly 6% as well. Booking Holdings off 14 bucks. Huntington something or other. HII, though, that's a ticker symbol. That's nearly down uh, 13 bucks or a little 5%. Shopify down 12 bucks, let's call it, off 8. Plenty for us to look at, of course. I want to look at what you want to look at. And somebody says charts. Now, Tarpentu, thank you. My wingman says, hey, Steve-O, you didn't post the charts. And right you are. So thank you for catching me there. No reason for me to do this show via TV or any other means when you can't see the charts. So hopefully you can see the charts right now. And that way you can see my screen out here. So where is it that you want to begin? I see no questions in the den, zero bupkis, and none from the email system out here. So I tell you what we're going to start. We're going to start by taking a look at the S&P 500. We're going to go try to figure out what is the message of the S&P 500. And we're going to do it by taking a look at the S&P 500 in multiple currencies because it is really all about following the money. Now, this happens to be a yearly chart for the Dow, but it really helps to illustrate the point of trying to understand, I'm sorry, the yearly chart for the S&P 500, take that back, but this is the S&P 500, both priced in dollars, yen, well, let's do it in order, from left to right, dollars, euros, yen, pounds, that's right. 
And we can see that from a yearly perspective, the real key was being able to break above in dollar terms, 1553. In euro terms, let's move this over to the left, 1735 euros. In yen terms, it was, uh, oops, let's say it was 190,000 and change. And in pound terms, it was 1062. And we say breakout, we're just using a previous swing point. Once price breaks above a previous swing point, again, a swing point being where you see some type of change in trend take place out here. Very easy to see the swing points on a yearly chart. And once price breaks above those levels, a swing point, what you like to see is price breaking above a swing point in all currencies. Likewise, a breakdown, you would like to see things breaking down in all currencies as well. That tells you you've got momentum either to the upside or to the downside. It's very helpful to take a look at these charts on different time frames. If we switch over and take a look at the S&P 500 in terms of uh, where it's priced on a monthly basis, you're going to see some different figures. What you are going to see out here, and you'll understand this shortly, is that 2872.87 is a key level in terms of dollars. That's our high at this stage here for the year that came in in January. In order for these markets, this market specifically, the S&P 500, to motor higher, you need to see a close above that, at least a breakout above that. Now, that's priced in dollars. When it comes to euros, you're going to be looking at 2,272 euros. Right now, you're trading out at 2,185. If you were buying the S&P in euros, and there are traders that are doing that, you just have to think of yourself sitting over somewhere over in Europe where you're looking at where euros are your currency. You don't give a hoot what the S&P is priced in dollars. Well, you sort of do, just like we should give a hoot what the S&P priced in euros is, just like we should give a hoot as to what the S&P priced in yen is and in pounds. We can see that here, in the case of the uh, S&P, it broke out in dollars back in July of 2016. The breakout in terms of euros was November 2016. For those of you who are wondering why was the S&P going up on light volume, it's because money was flowing. If you follow the money, money was flowing into the S&P 500 in dollars, in euros. Well, guess what? Back in the uh, time frame of February 2017, then confirmed again in April of 2017, the S&P 500 was breaking out in terms of yen. So if you were holding on to yen, you said, hey, this is a breakout party I want to participate in. What did the S&P 500 do? Continued moving higher. In fact, when we take a look at the S&P uh, uh, in pounds, that is when it actually first broke out in 2016, above a prior swing point. By the way, that prior swing point was in 2015, and that is really important. Because the question that you have to ask yourself is, and here was a consolidation. We know 2015 was a consolidation. Or I'm going to assume most of us know that 2015 was a consolidation year. And when you break above a consolidation, you've got a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation. In this case here, it was greater than the consolidation. And why was it greater than the consolidation? Because the S&P 500 was breaking out in all major currencies. It was the pound that actually broke out first in the S&P 500. And that was when there was a close above 1,436 pounds in the S&P 500. Do we need to take a look at the S&P priced and everything else, quite frankly, priced in other currencies? Well, unless you think we're the only ones trading the S&P 500, which is not the case, the answer is yes. So when we get back, let's go look at a shorter time frame. We're going to take a look at the S&P as it's priced uh, based upon what's going on with the 50-day moving average and the VIX index. And we'll take a look at Apogee or Perigee, but we'll be right back, that's for sure. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer 
in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's off 335 S&P 20. Uh, NASDAQ 100 off about uh, six points. And not to break a chain of thought, there is a question that came in with regard to the GDX. So we'll certainly cover that. But uh, we were taking a look at the S&P 500 uh, priced in dollars, euros, yen, and uh, pounds out there. And I think that this will help both you and I uh, assist us with regard to what is the S&P 500 doing. Now, if we take a look at this weekly time frame chart, let me just go ahead and explode it up on here. And you'll see this this is, this is a technical tool that anyone can use. All you have to do is really try to figure out where a swing point is. And by that, you're just looking for the highest high before there's a change in trend or the lowest low before you see a change in trend. What I've got marked here at the 2134.72 level, this S&P from a weekly standpoint happens to be the high from back in 2015. That happened to come in, by the way, in May of 2015. Again, a weekly time frame chart that we are taking a look at. And we can see that the S&P 500 consolidated in terms of uh, dollars really quite frankly until November of 2016 so that was about uh, I don't know what nearly 18 months out there yeah, 18 months to be specific. And once price really broke above that level, we did get a break above that area, by the way. Uh, this was in July of 2016, and price came back and tested and tested and tested. The final rejection took place in November of 2016, and the market kept moving. And, but we can see that we also had the, another swing point form back in August of 2016. That was about the 2188 level. Don't quote me exactly, because as I drew these things in here, I wasn't worried about 
getting the exact uh, high or the exact swing point, just really to give you an idea of how this works and what you can do as well. We're, again, we're taking a look at the S&P and U.S. dollars. We see another swing point that was passed. That was from February 27, 2017, when price got above that, continued moving higher. In essence, that level of 2,400 was tested, not exactly, but it was close back in August of 2017. But that also set up another little swing point test at 2490 price broke above that told you that the breakout party was going on at least inside of u.s dollars well then where are we today this is how you use it on the way to the upside how do we use it on the way to the downside the exact same way only the opposite so what have we had so far inside the S&P 500? We've had a swing point that is formed out here from February 5th, the week of February 5th. I believe it's the February 9th date, 2532.69. Have we had any type of breakdown yet? No, we have not, right? We have not had a breakdown. All we've had is a swing point from a weekly perspective that is formed inside of the S&P 500 out here. So what we are in right now is much like we were in in 2015. Does that mean we won't break through it? No, doesn't make. But where are we now in the game out here? We're inside a consolidation. That last between the price at the high end of 2872 at the low end of 2532. Well, if Stevie is correct, and it's important to follow the dollars, to follow the euros, to follow the yen, to follow the pound, where are we in the S&P 500 with regard to that? Well, if we go take a look at euros out here, because if we see a breakdown somewhere in another currency, maybe that's giving us a clue. Like the pound gave us a clue about the breakout in 2015 inside of the S&P 500 before dollars did. Well, if we take a look at the S&P 500 in euros, what we know is that the consolidation low in euros is 2076. That level, quite frankly, was tested back here in April. This is a weekly chart, the week that began, April 2nd out there. So we still have this consolidation pattern out here inside the S&P 500 in dollars and inside of euros. If we ever see the S&P 500 or when we see the S&P 500 get above 2,317 euros, that will be telling us that it's breaking out in that currency. We'll want to look at see what's going on in the S&P in dollars, in yen. So let's go take a look at yen. Where are we inside of yen with regard to the S&P 500? Well, we can see that it has a swing point. That swing point is hard to read that value. In fact, it's impossible to read that value unless I really make a little uh, sizable change here. And that bottom of that consolidation is at the 20, 271,163 yen. But we can also see that resistance out here inside the yen is really at 3146. You'd actually say here is another resistance zone that we'd be paying attention to. This will be a yellow line that I put up on the screen out here. And we'll be watching this see. So we haven't had a breakdown inside of yen, inside of euros, inside of dollars. We just have the consolidation party. But if we see in yen, price take out 298,102 yen out there, well, then we'll know that could say we're headed back to the highs in the S&P 500. Am I saying we're headed back to the highs? No, I'm saying what's important is to pay attention to the S&P 500 priced in other currencies other than just the U.S. dollar index out here. And we take a look at it based in pounds. Well, if we look at the swing point that actually formed, that has held this, it was not in February. It was in May of 2016. I'm sorry, 2017. Inside of the S&P 500 in pounds. It was really the 1814 level. When we saw price moving down into April the 2nd out here, the week of April 2nd, where did it find support? 1814 pounds. So maybe we ought to really just simply pay attention to the S&P 500 based in pounds. It gave us the 2015 breakout early. Maybe it'll go ahead and give us the 2018 breakdown. Or will it out here? Because right now, based in pounds, the S&P 500 is trading right up into resistance, which is 1,950 pounds out here. That happened to be the swing point from back in March of 2017. This is the weekly time frame chart. This is something for us to pay attention to. What can we conclude right now? What we conclude right now, can conclude right now, is we are in a big old consolidation. Priced in dollars, priced in yen, priced in euros, priced in pounds. 
Nothing has tipped its hat here with regard to the S&P 500 as to what it wants to do. The consolidation pattern can go on for a long period of time. As sometimes the guys in the den or gals in the den, they say chop, chop. This is a big chop, chop that is out there right now, even with the sell in May cycle that is out there. If we take a look at our TAS market profiles to go give us a feel for the S&P 500, to help us identify levels of support, what we're going to find out is that 20, 2577 and two ticks out here, 50 cents, is perhaps where the ES Mini is headed to. The reason why we would say that is right now the ES Mini is broken below the bottom of its daily profile. I do not know where price is going to end today. But if it does close below 26.35 or 26.24 right now, price will have closed below a bullish structured box. What do you mean bullish structured box? We're going to go ahead and turn price off out here. And by turning price off, we're going to see that this box that formed last week, the center line, 2663, much closer to the bottom. This says is this is where the buyers should have been lined up between these price levels, 2635 and 2663. Well, as we speak right now, those buyer, buyers seem to have vanished. But this will be an end-of-day reading out here. And if you close below the bottom of the box, you head back to a prior level of support. Well, certainly inside of the ES Mini, it's going to be the April 25th low. Maybe that's it, 26.11. But we don't know that to be the case. It could easily be 25.77. We could go on for hours and hours, but we can't because we're gonna to go to a break. And it's really important for me to show you this chart here because this is kind of confusing. Where price is trading in the VIX with regard to what the S&P 500 is doing today. It has me scratching my head. Maybe yours too. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio 
and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. So you might say, well, what is, uh, is it dandruff? Is that the reason they're just scratching your head out there? And no, that's not it. I, although I may, you know, I would wash my hair all the time. But in, in, in any event, and I'm in a humid environment, but so I think my skin is kind of soft. And I take a, a tablespoon of Udo's oil every morning. Do you take a tablespoon of Udo's oil every morning? Oh, uh, in any event out here, let's get back to what we really should be talking about, which is what is it that's got you scratching your head? One of the reliable and I can't tell you the reason why. I just know that it is out here. One of the reliable tools that you and I can use out here to help guide us as to what the S&P 500 wants to do is where is it trading in relationship to the 50-day exponential moving average? You might say, how would you come up with that? Through a lot of research, through a lot of study, by writing a number of different programs out here. You'll notice, even if we go back, and this is where we're starting, back in 2007 out here, uh, you'll notice that uh, what the S&P 500 tends to do doesn't matter what the price level is at with regard to the VIX. It just matters with relation with regard to where it is in relation to the 50-day exponential moving average. Because when the uh, spot volatility index trades above the other Stevie red line, the 50-day exponential moving average, so let's go back to October of 2017, uh, 2007, I should say, Freudian slip out here. You'll see that when price is trading above Stevie's red line inside the VIX index, you typically see the S&P 500 move lower. Now, when it bottoms and it tops out there, you see, you know, a change in trend taking place. So we're just simply saying in general what happens when the VIX trades below. You see the S&P 500. So you're watching really the bottom portion of my screen as well as the top portion of my screen. And you're looking at the red line and the blue. The blue line happens to be just simply the closing price for the spot volatility index. You'll notice here we get into January of 2008. The spot volatility index pretty much stays above the 50-day. It uses it as a springboard, and we see the S&P 500 continue to move to a lower price out here. When we see the uh, VIX uh, trade below the 50-day, this is even during the worst bear market in quite some time out here. If you go back now into March of 2008 and you saw a nice little counter trend rally inside the S&P 500, where was the spot volatility index trading below the 50-day? Then when things started moving in earnest again to the downside, where was the spot volatility index trading? Back above the 50-day. It doesn't matter what the number was. See how this works? It worked back then. It's worked all along. You take a look at coming off of the lows in 2009 out here. Where This was when the spot volatility index was in the 40s, in the 50s out here. And people would have been, you know, today you see a 50, and people would go, all it was is where is it trading in relationship to an instance, the last 50-day moving average. In this case, you used an exponential moving average. And back in 2009, once the... Uh, Spot volatility index continued, 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 continued to trade below the 50-day. What did the S&P 500 do? Continued moving higher. So where are we today? Where are we today? Well, the interesting thing is where were we in 2015? Let's ask where were we in 2015? Even a better question out here. Because in 2015, this is my contention at this stage here, where we had this nice little consolidation, even during the sell in May period inside the S&P 500, where was the uh, VIX uh, primarily trading? Interesting. It was trading below the 50-day. It traded above it a bit. It traded below, it traded above. We just simply, but when it really took off, the spot volatility index really moved above the 50-day. That's when we saw that quick move down over a period of four or five days, cementing those lows back in August of 2015. They really got cemented really back in, uh, well, February 2016. But as far as the Santa Claus rally out here, it was August of 2015, another little test in September, and then it was back up to the highs in 2015 out there. 
so we're trading below the 50-day line, and we have this consolidation, mostly this consolidation period in 2015. And where we, where have we been for the last many days out here inside the spot volatility index? Where are we right now? We're trading at 1662. Where's the 50-day line? It's at 1793. Here is the box with regard to where it is that we are trading. There is nothing that is taking place as we speak right now on May 1st out here. The old sell in May cycle that suggest anything other than we're still consolidating. Now look, we might change our tune a bit if we see the spot volatility next close above 1793, stay above its 50 day, because then we could have some real downside action inside of the S&P 500. But right now, as we speak, patterns are looking awfully similar to 2015. Whether we take a look at how the S&P and the spot volatility index are trading, or if we take a look at the S&P price in euros, yen, and uh, pounds out there, as well as certainly in U.S. dollars. And then if we go take a look at what's going on with regard to our horizontal trading ranges out here, well, right now as we speak, 26.30, and we're trading at 26.29, happens to be a horizontal trading range on a monthly basis out here. That held last month, that held the month before. Didn't mean we didn't have a price move to the downside. The downside being the bottom of the consolidation, right around the 2547 level out there. And you can see that the consolidation in 2015, that's on the right hand panel of the chart out here. That's the side, that's where we're at right now. Now, what's really important. I'm not prognosticating the future. I'm just saying, where are we trading right now? And these markets are choppy, and they are hard to trade out there. And they've got to have a lot of people wondering, what should I do? Well, you know what? If we see a close below the consolidation pattern, that spells trouble. And inside the S&P 500, the move would be a measured move, equal to or greater than the consolidation. Now, I don't have that marked here, but I can just look at my screen and say, well, that brings into play the 2192 level. So watching this consolidation pattern, watching how the S&P trades in all of the major currencies, and then the relationship between the 50-day exponential moving average and the spot volatility, those factors will absolutely be able to guide you as to where it is we are headed. So now that I'm done with that, and probably have put many people to sleep, or maybe I've given you, as I like to say, something to think about, let's go answer another question that has come in. I believe that there are a couple that have come in. And one of those was, do I think, do I think the GDX, the mining sector uh, ETF, is going to go test the lows out here? And the lows that this individual was asking about, I didn't see it right away, but after doing a little bit of work on it, we could see the low that was in question was the hammer candle from February the 9th. That low, by the way, is 2084. There was 101 million shares out there. The top of that session is 2168. Today so far, we've traded down to a low of 2204. 2204 versus, what did I say? I said uh, 2204 versus 2168 out there. Um, so that might be tested, sure. I could see that. What's going to be the biggest influencing factor, though, with regard to where the GDX trades, I think, is where is gold headed to? If gold's headed lower, and I forget who, answered the, who asked the question out there, my apology, my screen's a little bit small out here, but um, if, uh, if, if, and is it going to go test the low, which was the real question, 2084, uh, if gold is going to totally fall apart and break down, then the answer is, yeah, sure, I can see that taking place. But is gold really breaking down? Isn't that really the question that we have to answer? So when we come back from this break, why don't we go take a look at that? Ruby wants to go take a look at the yen, which we haven't done, so we'll do that. And I'll check my emails in case somebody sent in an email request. But our phone lines are open. Steve Rhodes, 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the TAS Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the TAS Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So we're trying to answer the question, hey, Steve-O, where's the GDX headed to? And we'll go test those lows from February 9th out there. And um, I say before we can even answer that question, we've got to get a feel as to what is gold doing out here. Now, gold is trading down, where is it, uh, about $12.80, trade out at 1306 Of course, that's priced in U.S. dollars. So after we did that first segment there, I think of it like this. If you're sitting at a gold desk and you're sitting over in Europe, whether you're trading in euros or pounds, do you really care what gold is doing in dollars? Aren't you really trying to make a profit and trying to make a profit in your currency? And do you think that there are traders in gold over in Europe or in Japan or really around the world or in India or in China? So it's really incumbent upon you and I to understand uh, what is gold doing in those currencies out here. Because quite frankly, that could be a larger influencing factor than a high volume low in an ETF that is tracking the uh, mining sector. Just saying, it's something to think about. Now, what you and I have identified out here is that gold price in euros seems to be an influencing factor on the direction of gold. And if we take a look at what gold in dollars is doing, and I'm not saying that it's done moving lower in dollars. We do know from a closing basis, because that's what the blue lines on the chart represent here, that gold trading in dollars has been in a sideways consolidation. The level of the consolidation, or at least we believe that it has, we're going to find out soon enough if that's the case or not. But if we take a look at the closing low on March the 1st, that level is 1305.20. We're trading at 1306.10 as we speak right now. Is this going to hold? I don't know. But whereas we, 
we, U.S. traders, U.S. dollar gold traders, are at the bottom of our consolidation. Where are we in terms of euros? We ain't anywhere near the bottom of the consolidation. Yeah, you can say because, well, the euro is playing such a factor inside the U.S. dollar index and so forth. Well, if it is the largest weighting inside, hey, look, here's the deal. When we see divergences between gold priced in euros and gold priced in dollars, and that's what we have right now, we've got a beauty of a divergence out here. In the past, it has been the divergence inside of euros that has painted the way. In other words, if euros making lower highs while gold is making higher highs priced in dollars, it has been euros priced that's that's giving up with the lower highs. It's really painted the eventual direction of gold. So now with regard to the GDX question out here, because yes, it's worthwhile to pay attention at February 9th swing point with 101 million shares out there. But if that is where your both your eyes are. You're misusing one of your eyes. Let that be your left eye. Let your right eye, or vice versa, it doesn't matter to me, be taking a look at what's gold doing in other currencies. And I suggest at this stage of the game, just kind of focus on gold priced in euros. Right now, trading out at 1088 versus $1,306 U.S. dollars out here. So there's a divergence going on. So now what do we do? That's the real question. Well, I think we just start taking a look at different time frame charts. We start looking to see, is there any kind of a bottom signal since we are at the bottom of the consolidation inside of uh, gold? I don't know. Let's start with a 30-minute chart. Let's make that be kind of our short-term chart out here. Yeah, we can do 5, we can do 10, we can do 15. Uh, but let's just simply just go with this chart. We know when taking a look at this gold chart here for 30 minutes, that price was moving lower, doing less relative energy. But finally, it found the energy. You know, it's like exercising the muscle. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. No, sometimes you just feel like you're pooped. You don't know if you can really do it. You don't know if you can do one more curl out there. And then all of a sudden, you find the energy. Well, that's what gold did at about 10.30 this morning. It found the energy and went ahead and pushed lower. We do see a piercing candle. That's a little bit of a bullish reversal signal. We do see price did move above Stevie's red line. You can see price oscillators below zero. So it says, okay, counter trend rally that's in place. Was there anything else going on at that bottom that's something that you or I should be focused on? I don't know. But let's go use the one other tool we've got. Let's go count the waves to the downside. Let's use this swing point here. It's the only swing point that I can see that we can use. And that was at 130. Looks like 130 yesterday. Oops, I got to use the right one. Let's count to the downside, not to the upside out here. So let's do it again. Hocus pocus, dominocus. Well, that didn't work. I chose the wrong swing point. Let's see. I'm going to try it one more time here. Stay on the swing point. There we go. Now, now, what do you know? What do you know out here? Could gold potentially be bottoming, giving us a signal on a 30-minute time frame? Once Stevie finally was able to get the tool, select the right spot, now what we can see is that gold on a 30-minute time frame was singing in the key of G, that's wave number seven, as it made that low. Is that just a temporary low? I don't know. Here's one thing we can say. We've seen gold... Look like it wants to form a bit of a bottom. On a daily chart, it's down at the bottom of a consolidation area. Priced in euros, that's not telling us that gold wants to move lower. That's saying not so fast. And now we're going to see whether the first retracement, and this is a 30-minute basis, is really just a retracement, setting up at least an A to B equals C to the upside, or maybe is it setting up a series of higher lows out there? I don't know. Let's put this on even a shorter-term chart out here, 10-minute chart. No idea what's going to pop up on my screen, or even if it is going to pop up, because sometimes things are a bit slow when I have all these tools running. But let's just cross our fingers and uh, see if it responds and gives us something. I probably could have changed to a different chart out there. Oh, I'll be a son of a gun. On a 10-minute chart, you can see it's got your favorite bottoming signal here where price gets stretched to the downside. So maybe there may be something there. And that would then say, no, 20, 84, whatever the number was. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But we have to see the high of the day get taken out to then suggest to you, well, you know what? Maybe just maybe because of the way that you go ahead and you put all these things together, because you take a look at gold price and other currencies, because you say to yourself, you know what, we've got to chase the money. We've got to follow the money. Well, 
Yesterday, you and I, we took a look at the five-hour time frame chart. So we're going to go ahead and put that on our chart here. We can see that on a five-hour basis, price is also moving lower, doing with less relative energy. No bullish reversal signal as we speak right now. But we do know that the move lower thus far is with less energy. Now, that's always a good thing if you're looking for something to form a bottom. Just like moving higher with less energy, well, in this case here, really moving lower with less weakness, moving higher with less energy, you, you kind of know what I was referring to, or I hope that you do, and I wasn't confusing the Sam heck out of you. Um, so you know what I would suggest, whoever asked that question about the GDX out here, don't pay as much attention to that high volume low. Pay more attention to what gold is doing, both price in dollars and on multiple time frames as well as in euros. And I hope that that helps you out. May have belabored the question, but I don't know any other way to have explained it to you. Now, I got an email. And actually, it came in yesterday from Eddie. Eddie, if you're listening, we're going to just follow up on that email out here. Because you asked, hey, is the market just waiting for Apple? No. Is Apple giving us a clue right now? That's my question to you before we go back to this break. And when we come back, is Apple giving any kind of signal to you as to what and how it's going to respond to its earnings report? Hmm. Something to think about. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Good break. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Does anybody know what Apple was doing, what the news was on February 21st, 2018? How about on the trading day of uh, January 24th, 2018? The answer is probably no. One day, probably we'll be able to put our cursor over a candle, and all the news headlines will pop up, and we'll say, oh, that's why price did what it did. Look, I'm a technical trader out here, and that means I pay attention to patterns, not to the news, and not what's going on, not even with regard to when earnings came out or anything along those lines. And if you and I, and do patterns fail? Sure they do. But do patterns give us a clue as to what's going on? Yeah, I think they do out here, because we've seen them repeat over and over and over again. And if we take a look at Apple, as we speak right now, I'll draw the pattern in. You can see that what Apple has done, it is now completed, it is now confirmed, it has done all of the above, a Gartley buy pattern. Now, it gave us the first signal yesterday when we had a nice little bullish engulfing candle form. Of course, price ran right into resistance where it should, which was Stevie's red line, the oscillator on change line. That was priced at 166.85. As we come into 4 o'clock, I don't know where price is going to close. But what I do know is if price closes over 166.85 and you have a Gartley buy pattern out here, not that the pattern can't fail, but if you believe that there's an early clue as to what Apple wants to do, there you go. Because all I'm doing is trading the patterns. I don't know what happens each day to day. I can't put my cursor over any of those candles and tell you what the news was or what was going on. Does it mean you just trade it blindly? No, but if you're short Apple, it, I'd say just you got to be cautious because you're not seeing that play out. Now, maybe this is like playing liar's poker, and this is just simply a false move. I don't know. But if you happen to be a person that likes the Gartley pattern, and you like a Gartley buy or a Gartley sell, well, guess what you got? You got a Gartley buy pattern out here. What does that mean? That means that there's five different outcomes. That means maybe Apple's just going to do a 0.382 retracement, 169.37. Maybe it's going to do a 0.618. A lot of people out there like that 0.618 retracement, and that would be 174.76. Maybe there'll be a 0.786 at 178.61. I don't know. But what I do know, as of 156 in the afternoon, Apple's generating a buy signal. And that's got to make you say, hmm, something to think about. I'll give you something to think about. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear in mind, David White's up next. After David, you've got uh, Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5, Andy Heck from 5 to 6. I'll be back with you on wonderful, wild Wednesday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018